Okay, so recently I've had some requests for the match three games that I've made several years ago. So since then I've first of all I found a better way to do it and so first of all I would like to showcase what I want to show you in this tutorial. So what you will end up with in this tutorial is a match three game uh, where you can match three or more to create a combo. You can also match gems but if you don't make a combo they just uh, match randomly. So I'll just show you like mark this one and I'll mark this other one and they will go down here and I will create a combo. Right so for this game just this game specifically, I have made it so that I need to reduce the cooldowns of my units to attack other uh, enemies. Um, this unit needs 7 green gems in order to attack, so I'll just show you how the intention is. So, like this, I got 3 green gems, now the cooldown is 4, and so on. So, and I got that, and I also got 3 uh, purple gems by uh, by random and so on and so on. So as you can see it works well and we can even create some sick combos uh, if we are able to do that. Um, let's try and do the red ones here and see if we can make some greens. Green ones go here. Yeah sure that looks good. Right so we got all that and now my unit is ready to attack. So you don't need to implement this attacking thing but, but you can do it if you want to cre create that kind of game. So just right now let's jump into the tutorial um, let's try and see where how things go here. Um, right, so game maker is launched. So what I want you to do is like pretty standard. You choose some different kinds of shapes. So for me, I have this uh, 150 times 150 sh uh, shape here. That is my uh, my red gem or my red object. And you do that with blue, green, purple, black, whatever colors you want to implement. But think about how many you want because they need to be able to make combos. This is my inversion for the ones when they are marked, so the, the colors are blended. Um, right, and this is just my marker because I want to, these unit, uh, these uh, images are big and I want them to be uh, sized down a bit, scaled down in size, and I want them to be 100 times 100. And this is just my token I have created using the, uh, st the standard function of doing a gradient fill. And just making it non-transparent. I think it's pretty simple. If you want to make a, a, a match-free game, you should know everything I'm talking about at this point, because otherwise you're really you're uh, you're doing something that's that's a bit too difficult for your level. Just say, right. So you need to have these things, and I wanted to have a hundred times hundred square that's non-transparent as well, centered. And I want you to have a three hundred times a hundred pixelate uh, pixels uh, of a block here, which is centered as well non-transparent and the same thing for the other one so they can just call them sprite 300 times 100 and sprite 100 uh, times 300 because it's really easy and really simple so first of all we need to have our gems and our gems are generated each turn as you can see the setup here is the setup of the room is that I have my objects here which are the objects called just put it up here objects creator and the creators they create gems and the stoppers stop gems from falling down that's how it works so what you want you to do is to have a gem and we just start creating uh, the object gem which is a parent for all the gems so object red gem will be a have a parent of the object gem and to show you in the create event you will need to put that the type of object is the object red which means it refers to itself as the type and you need to call the inherited event which you do uh, from the fourth menu you have the call event here you can put that in there right so that's what you need for now so go into the the gems and for the gems you need to have this code execu ex executed you need to put the mask as a hundred times a hundred the ones that you have defined as a sprite you need the size to be the sprite mask size of height divided by the sprite height of the sprite index so mask index divided by sprite index in the height this means that you will take basically 150 and divide it by 100. So it's not really that difficult. Mark equals to false and in fall equals to false because they are not doing that. In the destroy event, you will need to say if it is in fall, then it will create. Uh, if it's not in falling, which means that it will be destroyed normally, it will create a fader, an object fader. We will get into that later. Just copy this code here. We will change the sprite index to the given sprite index so that the, when it fades out as a nice effect when you create a combo, you want to show the effect of them being taken out. Like that's the thing I like. 
So that's what it's all about, and you need to sprite to match the correct sprite. So that's that's all. In object, uh, no, in alarm zero, you want um, the speed to be zero and the move snap to hundred because we are working in a hundred times a hundred grid. And you want to create a stopper, um, which we will get into in the moment. And with that, when you have uh, no no when you when you find a stopper near a stopper at the position because this is after they have moved you need to destroy that so with the rem rem being the instance nearest of the stopper instance destroy with the gems all gems will be unmarked the mark equals to false and so this is where to get interesting because if they are meeting to the left the same type as themselves or if they're meeting to the right the same type as themselves they will create a resolve object that's object resolve horizontal that is where you need the sprite 300 times 100 to create a horizontal uh, match free pair. And the same goes for this one here if they resolve vertically. So that's the same way, just the other way around. You use the Y instead of the X. So this means upwards and this means downwards. So it, it should be really simple and given in the code how it works. We'll, I'll show you how to create the object resolves later because they're really important. Right, so for the globals, global chosen equals to zero, global chosen two equals to zero, and we're ready equals to zero it's global you can just pause the video and copy the thing so you understand it i'll explain it in a moment for the step event um this is just for avoiding that they fall together and fall when they're not supposed to fall nothing really interesting about that other than you need to copy these things and put it in uh it will all make sense um right and so and when they when a gem is in a collision with the object resolve, it should be destroyed so that we remove the gems when they are resolved as a pair. That's what the resolve object do. They look for a pair. Right. So this was for the left press event. So when you press it, so if you can press, if ready, global ready is equal to true. And if it's not marked already, global at zero will be equal to that one. And it will mark and global that chosen equals to the ID. This means that we will always find the one that we marked the first. Right. Else. It will ask for whether or not the distance from this gem here is uh, close to the other gem. Remember that we're working in 100 times 100 grid. So this means that if it's smaller than 101, it's a good match and the mark will equal to true. Global chosen 2 equals to ID and ready will equal to false because now we have made a match and we cannot move anymore. So now we will uh, execute the script called script move and we will have the values X and Y of ourself and where we go to so chosen global dot chosen which is the first gem will move towards the second gem glo chosen dot uh, chosen two and chosen two will move towards chosen one so that i think it makes sense so i'll just finish off here draw you just draw the sprite and if it's marked you draw the inverted sprite on top of it and you make it uh, semi transparent and you put in the size, so you use the draw sprite uh, extended version to, you know, compress it. That looks nice. Right, so you do all the same things for all the other objects here, nothing special about them. Um, for the resolve objects, they are they look like this, and they have the parent of the resolve, and the resolve is really simple when it is created. It will be destroyed for the alarm zero within two, meaning that if no combo is reached, it will destroy itself, so we don't get any box. But if they find a combo, they will of course resolve and destroy. So that makes sense. For the fader, the fader is it has some values here just to make it nice, and the values they change over time. So 30, that's because I work in a 30 step room, meaning that 1 times 30 will be within that frame rate, it will be destroyed and gone. And so I want it to rotate, so my direction will be rotated and the size will be increased. And that's what I draw here. I use the size, direction, and the visual to showcase my thing. Good, okay. So for the object creation, it has an alarm zero equals to one, and it says that it needs to create gems. If no gems or no falling objects are met, uh, it will create a transform object and the alarm will continue to go over and over each time to check whether or not it's empty or not. So it will create the transform object. The transform object, it's just a simple object with a standard sprite. It will just try and find a random between the object red, blue, green, purple or black and it will create that one as a falling object and it will set 
the object type to the object chosen, meaning that after it has fallen, it will create the right one. So object fall and go in here, it has the inverted sprite just to show whatever it is. You could change that in any way. And so the object is equal to zero, but the object will be changed so that whenever it is done falling, it will create the right object at the place. So that's where it goes. So this one is the one that falls down. And after that, it is resolved and it creates the right object. And you, of course, you can just draw it like we did before with the size and everything is like that. You saw it in the code, it all makes sense. Good. So that was for the creator object that creates. So the stubbers are just uh, solids here, solids with 100 times 100, the blue one here. And temporary stops is the same. Temporary stops has a parent of being the stopper. You will use the temporary stops when you need to swap them around so they don't fall because they swap around. Because that's really messy. I've seen that. So object control. You need to add all the control variables. That is the global chosen equals to zero, global chosen two equals to zero, and global that already equals to true. And so that's basically all of it. I have covered everything in here. Um, everything should be nice and working really, really smooth now. So just to explain again what happens, I want to showcase the game one more time, just to show what happens. So first thing is that you can you sometimes you will get combos right from the beginning. That's one error already but i know this error exists and that's just how it goes because you can change that around but, right but like, like now we started off with the combo that's not really smart so the thing is that when i press here i am marking a unit and i'm marking the other one to create a combo so whenever my uh, whenever i sense that there is a combo what happens is what happens is that my uh, my resolve objects are created and if the resolve objects meet anything uh, in a pair of three, they will be destroyed. But the resolve objects will only be created if I already know that there will be a pair of three. And that's the thing, because for the gems here, when this is executed, it, it asks whether if I have my own color, my own type, and then if the same type is met to the left and the same type is met to the right, it means that, that there must be at least a pair of three together. If there is a pair of three, then the object resolve is created. An object resolve always have the parent of the resolve object, meaning that every gem, when the gem knows that there's a pair and it meets with the object resolve, they are destroyed. And when they are destroyed, the creator will, they will move down, um, the other gems will move down, and the creator will do this thing for us. It will, net, it will generate new objects for us. Um, and the objects will fall down as a transform, and the transformer will create a falling object and when the falling object uh, will need a stopper or another gem it will stop the transit and it will create an, an the object that is desired so that's how it works it's really simple and it's 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 less messy than the thing i did before um the only thing right now is that i cannot avoid having combos made right from the beginning but of course we can code our way out of it we could also just you know we could also just define ourselves like we could do like this put them in ourselves so we know that we are unable to create a combo from the beginning like if i do it like this as you can see here i cannot create a combo right from the beginning because i have already filled in all the blank spots with colors of my own desire so that's a way to do it to avoid it though i really don't suggest this i think people should be able to code their way out of it well let's try and give let's give it a try i think we will we will experience that this is pretty fine um so you can do it like this of course um as a way to start off so you avoid having combos made right from the beginning as you can see right now no combos and no other gems are generated because there are no space but in the very moment that i do it like this as you can see things start to getting a float and it looks pretty good Right, so I am really happy uh, with this result. Oh, that was bad of me. Um, right, so like this, I, I feel like it works pretty fine. Um, everything that we want is being generated as it's supposed to. Um, and now you can just implement scores, so you can implement whatever you feel like. So it's, it's really simple. So for what I did was that whenever a, for instance, just if you want to create a score or like a farm hero kind of game, Whenever a certain gem of this, a certain color is destroyed, you just add that value to the uh, the counter you have, unless it's in a fall. If it's falling, then if you don't want that to happen. 
So that's the thing here. You just add that 